Hello and welcome to About the Albums. Uh, this is a new thing I'm trying out. I want to talk about just all of the albums uh, that I've made of music up until this point. Um, just because I think it'll be fun for, you know, kind of documenting some things. And, uh, you know, so before I forget the little tidbits and stories about them. And maybe you guys will think they're neat too. Um, and another part of it's because I also remastered all the stuff through Audacity recently. I did what I could to get rid of background noise, boost some of the bass, that stuff, to try to make it sound a little bit better than it did before. And, uh, once I'm done getting all these out, uh, basically, you're gonna start seeing some new stuff that hopefully will, will sound better, but, uh, forgive the setup and me trying to feel this out a bit. I don't quite know what I want to do and how to make this exactly work. But, uh, got the mic over there that is picking up audio, I hope. And I've, uh, I've got the camera over here and a light here, and it's just weird. But hopefully it's okay, and hopefully you find it interesting, because I might. So the plan is to basically look at each album, kind of talk about it a little bit as a whole, and then just go to each song and say something about each one if I can. And this one's going to be a little more difficult, because this is Sam's Keyboard Series on Tape, which is just a compilation. These first few are kind of weird compilation things because I did some channel cleanup stuff. So basically, uh, this is all the stuff that I recorded on cassette tapes that I actually, you know, like, whatever, audio tapes. I did that before I, I had uh, another way to record, really. So that's what we're uh, going to be looking at here is a bunch of those from all these different tapes and um, essentially just kind of talking about, you know, each one a little bit. So I don't have as much to say because none of these have any really any words to them or anything. But uh, I did all these tapes from roughly 2005-ish, probably to around 2013, let's say the last time I dabbled in trying to record on tapes. And eventually I just took the, the whole leap into just recording on, um, you know, on, uh, with my camera into that because it had a better sound, it was easier to transfer files that way. And so getting these transferred in the first place was playing it on a tape and then um, moving like the, the audio from the tape... <laughs> Uh, basically, I, 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 took, I took the tape, I put it in a tape player, and then I put my camera in front of the tape player and I played it, and that's how I was able to transfer all those. So there's a lot of extra background noise, and I've tried to get rid of as much as I can without drowning out the actual music. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so, uh, let's get to the, the songs. So Drifting is a song that I guess it's, it's one that I've liked enough that uh, at one point I, when I had all these tapes, I actually decided, okay, well, like I want to record more stuff. But I don't have any other blank tapes anymore. So I, uh, I think I took like, maybe I had like one blank tape or something. And I took a bunch of stuff from these uh, like three earlier tapes and I just recorded the best stuff onto one tape. I think it was a longer tape. And then I recorded something else over the original three tapes of those so I would have more stuff to work with. Um, and since a lot of that early stuff I really didn't like. And uh, I guess the idea that it would come from, you know, one of my earliest times recording and doing stuff by myself for my own music, because um, that's what I started doing that. I was like 13 or something. Um, to go from that... Uh, making the cut from there, and then uh, later, um, now, that is making the cut for this. Um, I think that's uh, kind of interesting about it, that I would like it that much. And it's a neat little song. It's one where it kind of has its own rhythm. I didn't really need to have a drum track playing over it. So it felt cool to have something that was like an original I made this song kind of song. And um, I don't know. Um, I uh, I guess the, the feel of it is more like, kind of like, yeah, like drifting down like i mean it's kind of like a sad song almost kind of like depressing or like i mean not really depressing i guess but i don't know it just seems like you're just kind of like drifting along this like kind of spooky like river or something um like on a log i don't know why that was the visual that came into my mind for this all the time but it was and uh i don't know it's kind of it's kind of neat and it is it's simple and it works it flows <laughs> Like, like, down the... You get the idea. So, I, yeah, that's... That's drifting. So, the 
horns um, is another one where I kind of like that it was just, you know, musical. I didn't have to rely on, like, the background music of the keyboard or the beats. Um, I think it's probably worth mentioning, too, quick, that these are, like, these earlier ones are with my older keyboard, not this particular keyboard I have here. It was a CTK. I can't remember the exact one. It's still a Casio. A Casio CTK, like, 300-something or something like that. I'd have to look it up. I don't think I even had the booklet for it anymore. Um, I had to try to find it somewhere. I used to remember. Like, 345, maybe? I don't know. Something like that. Um, and, uh... Anyway, so it sounds different than this. It didn't have pressure-sensitive keys or anything. It was older model and everything, but still a Casio one. Um, but, uh, yeah, th this one sounded pretty good with, like, the horns out of neat on it. And I actually, um, I guess I like the kind of medieval feel to it. Like, kind of like, a, I don't know, maybe like, you know, like knights and medieval kind of that kind of thing. Um, I guess I was really into the idea of, like, just the simple, like, oh, yeah, like, like knights, noble knights going and fighting for stuff and whatever. It's a pretty simple concept to kind of uh, grip around. Um, so I that imagery came to my mind a lot and this kind of fit that. And so I liked that feeling of that. And it kind of, I don't know, just the way, like, it's pretty simple, again, but it flows well enough. Um, it's interesting enough and it's short enough where it doesn't feel like it drones on forever. Um, so yeah, the only shame here is that the sound quality, I guess, in the recording doesn't really, didn't come out super well. So, like, you can't really hear the highs super well on some of that. Like, some of the highs were too quiet, which is weird because usually those are louder than other stuff. But uh, other than that, it actually, it's pretty good. So, um, uh, that's, uh, I don't know, that's the horns. I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. But, uh, you know, I was really good at naming things because there's horns in it. Quick update on that uh, keyboard model. I just I looked a little bit between shots here. CTK four ninety six was one of the suggested ones, and I just typed in CTK. It's the Casio CTK four ninety six because I looked at the picture of it and I was like, "Holy shit, that's the keyboard!" <laughs> but uh, this song is the lights um, off of the album The Lights, which I actually liked a lot. Which is one I recorded. It was on tape still, um, no words, but I actually, um, I really liked it because it was one where I got to use my uh, my brother's cool, because uh, he played guitar, he had this cool uh, amp that had like effects built into the amp. And so I could make it sound like, obviously, I could make it, it was cool because I make it sound bassier and stuff, but it had cool like effects to put on things. So I was, I really like playing around with the different effects on it too and just making myself sound different than just the keyboard would produce. And, um, this was like end up being the title track of it because I really liked it, and I recorded that whole album in basically one night. He stayed overnight at somebody's house, and I was like, "Sweet, I'm gonna go record this while I have access to this amp." He's gone. <laughs> and I recorded this entire album like a one night, and it, it was awesome. And I really liked the way most of it turned out, really. But this song, I always thought was really cool on it, and uh, it's also neat because it has like the cool intro bit and like the little outro thing it falls into. The outro's a little long because I added an extra piece there, and I think. I may have just screwed up and then tried to fix it. And it came out okay, but it makes the end drag a little weird there. Um, even the song itself is maybe a little repetitive because I'm not that talented at playing. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one I still really like. I think it's really cool. So um, that's The Lights. Uh, always enjoyed it. Always a, always a pleasure. And it's the one album of, of all of these, of the tape ones, where I considered, like, maybe I'll leave it up and not take it down with these other ones and do remastering stuff to that and whatever but i ended up i ended up just axing it too but it was it was close i had to consider this one at least and that that means something to me This one uh, is Sidewalk Jam. I don't really even remember the title or anything of it when, uh, you know, looking at this, I was like, what is that? What's that? Uh, but uh, it's, uh, you know, you can tell, like, the bass on that, that old keyboard is, is it wasn't very good. Most of the bass tones were not great, but um, I like messing around with, like, uh, just doing cool bass things, um, I guess, because it just makes for any, like, structure for a song, and having just a drum and bass was kind of neat. 
Um, I think it's short enough uh, for it to stay catchy. Because if I had done it for a really long time, it would have gotten, you know, wouldn't gotten really repetitive and may not have made it. But because it was so short, kind of neat and catchy, and, you know, it ended before I was like, I get it. I like it. I don't know why I call it Sidewalk Jam. I mean, I just thought of, like, meeting outside and, like, using chalk on the sidewalk or something. Um, I, I, I don't think I've ever... Very rarely do I ever use the word jam in a song um, in a way that means other than musical sense. I don't usually mean that, like, they, I didn't mean, like, somebody was trying to, you know, they dropped their sandwich on the sidewalk and now there's jam on it. Heavy banjos is just using the, the banjo um, tone on my keyboard with distortion on it. Um, I also did have a, a, another amp. Uh, it was my brother's old guitar amp. <laughs> Funny thing. Uh, was like, so he's like, well, I have this other one that's better. So I got that old one. And um, this will have it right here. That's why I, I made a motion like this that you can't see because the camera only goes to you know. But... Uh, it's like a first act amp. It's not great, but it gave me some ability to kind of boost, you know, bass and tinker with some of the sounds of, you know, bass, mid, treble, and the distortion, uh, or gain or whatever. So it, 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 it was, um, this, this song, I guess, is just kind of cool because it's just based on the, hey, the banjo, the banjo tone, but it made them, you know, electric banjos, distorted banjos. So, like, I thought that was just funny. And also, <laughs> I enjoyed, like, like, just the song itself, it's, like, it's pretty, like, methodic, like, the same kind of, like, stuff goes between, um, but it just kind of keeps moving, and, uh, I don't know, the, the pace of it, and the fact that it varies up enough where it doesn't really get too boring, and then it doesn't go on too long, that's a big recurring theme, is that some of my songs I know will go on too long because I don't do enough with them, so, <laughs> these are good because, so far, not a lot of these have really done that, and this is another case of that thing I said. The last time at Battle Pond is um, a reference to, I think it came out from like an earlier album, a uh, reference to one that was before that tape, which was uh, called uh, Return to Battle Pond, where I had the song Battle Pond, then I had Return to Battle Pond, and I actually think those were based off of a thing I made in the PlayStation game MTV Music Generator. Don't worry, we'll get there. There's more to be said about that. And then I think later on another tape, um, I believe this came from, I could be wrong remembering this. It's not important, they're all off of YouTube now anyway, but I believe I called it Return to Keys. No, it wasn't Return to Keys because it would have been piano. Whatever. What? Uh, I don't know. It came later I, is a thing. And uh, <laughs> the important part that I maybe should, I should script things sometimes, shouldn't I? So like, um, it was just a reference to there was, you know, Battle Pond and then Return to Battle Pond on the same one, and I was like, the last time at Battle Pond, and I guess it maybe was on the same one also, I'm not sure, but I remember it was referenced to that, where it's like, it's the last time we're at Battle Pond, and they're fighting over this, this water source, and I had like this cool like artwork I made for it that I always really liked, so, um, that was neat, uh, but, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, um, mostly all I had to say for like the interesting bits of this, otherwise it's just another thing I'm kind of, uh, I, I have a very set like, you know, Obviously, the main riff is cool. I like the main riff, and then I'm kind of trying to play off of that a little bit in between it, the pieces. The intro is a little weird, like, long thing before we get to the actual, like, meat of the song. But then the song just kind of ends after that. So while the song is a little long, uh, it's not too bad uh, in that sense. It just doesn't, doesn't go places. It just kind of does the same thing for maybe a little bit too much for my taste. Now, maybe you like it more than I do now, but I still like it enough to put it on this. I feel like a lot of these are pretty pointless because I'm just saying, like, hey, this song is okay. It's not too long or it is too long. I maybe should not say that for every song because that's who gives a shit about if I think it's too long or not. Nobody. Even I don't. I'm going to look back and be like, I don't care what your pain is, asshole. I'm going to be like, damn. Future me is as mean as I thought I was, would be.
Abandoned Wasteland. Uh, I think it's not a very fitting title. I don't really know exactly why I, I picked that because when I think of Abandoned Wasteland, I'm thinking of like, you know, like a wasteland and no one's there. And I guess this just didn't give me that vibe uh, when I was listening to it. So I guess I, I find it weird in retrospect that I called it that other than I thought it was a cool name. Uh, and I think the main reason I kept this song too is because like, I can tell you, playing through this, um, there's a few riffs I had in mind there, uh, and, like, one of them, one of the main ones that comes in pretty early after a little intro bit, and then we come back to it at the end, that riff kind of reminds me a bit of, like, uh, a little bit of Turok 2, uh, I played a lot of, uh, that when I was younger, I remember that was one that stuck out in my head, so it reminded me a little bit of something, like, you might hear from that, uh, but, like, the other parts of Clue was just kind of, like, fucking around and i guess i figured it was easier to kind of fumble around with strings and find interesting stuff that sounds neat um so it wasn't really a lot of that wasn't really planned it was just kind of like i fell into a lot of it until i kind of tried to bring it back to where i wanted to be which is how i did a lot of music it's how i still do a lot of music uh, with solos and stuff too but um so it's not really that impressive of a song as much as it just like it turned out okay by happenstance um uh, and uh, i find me a little bit of rock too so uh could have had a better name I don't know. So Rough Water, uh, funny story, actually started out uh, being called Quest for Gold uh, on an album, whatever, the, the tape was Quest for Gold. Uh, interesting tidbit about that, that was one of the tapes I used when I recycled one of my old ones my second tape was called golded g-o-l-d-e-d -E and i just kind of went over that with marker tried to get rid of the other one and turned into quest for gold so uh, eh. kind of a pirate theme you know, kind of like the thought was oh yeah it's like pirates going on a quest and trying to you know find gold that sort of very simple and uh, so it was called that and then later I had a song I made on uh, with MTV Music Generator. I had a quest for gold. I ended up making it into an actual song where I sang on it and stuff too. Quest for gold. <laughs> so uh, when I came back and it's like, oh, this does not sound like those. Um, uh, for some reason the wires got crossed and I thought they were the same tunes. So I changed the name of this to Rough Water. Um, and so I had another one that was called Rough Water also, and that one was actually the same as the later Quest for Gold things. So I, I've since fixed the titles on those, so they make sense now. Also, this one's a little long, um, and I, I can kind of tell why this one was a bit long. Um, there's a part in the middle where you can tell, like, there's a few riffs I had planned, and I couldn't quite get to the riff I had planned earlier in that middle part, so I kind of floundered around a bit until I finally, you know, do hit it. Um, but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's like, uh, it, the reason it's kind of long is because, um, like, when, when you make music, uh, I guess, like, it, I don't know, maybe it's not, like, the way I've explained this before, some people have asked to, and it's kind of like, um, I guess the ability of, like, you know, like, making your, when you're playing it and making the music, and it just feels really cool to, like, make notes and put notes together and have it go, and the ability of, like, of being able to do that kind of feels like a superpower, like, oh man, I can make, like, I can make this, this music, it's really cool, uh, and so, I guess I really, um, I don't know, I just, I really liked how this sounded and I kept going with it and I could kind of hear that and feel that as I was listening to it here. So that's why it's maybe a bit too long is because I, was, I just really thought it sounded cool and it felt cool to play it. And that's kind of the reason why a lot of stuff ends up being kind of long. That's why I guess some solos and songs, you know, go on for fucking ever. It's because it feels awesome to do that. And it's not always necessarily the best thing for the, you know, the song as an entire thing. But, uh, that's... I don't know, that, 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 that's an interesting tidbit, I thought. How about you? I don't know. <laughs> that's why it's a little long. Uh, at least I got all that changed up now, so hopefully I'm not confused later about why the names are different than uh, my Cena and Al Brain remembers when I'm... Well, I'm probably not going to live that long, am I? My health's pretty bad. Uh, the next song... <laughs> Newborn Beginnings, as you can tell, was the beginning uh, of uh, one of the sides of a tape. I think it was the beginning of the entire tape. I don't know if it was just a side or not, but it, um, 
you can hear the tape starting up, and I guess kept that in there because I kind of like that sound. Um, it's just, I don't know, something about hearing the tapes moving and everything, and the clicks and the way they stop and all that stuff. I, it's just very nostalgic for me, and um, you can probably hear birds are up. I don't know why they're here at this hour. It's rather late, but I guess I think they live in a bush outside this window, which means uh, you may hear them in videos if they pick up on the mic. Oops. But, like... I uh, I can tell this one was one I, I I guess I liked again. It was cool making music like this, and also I liked. Um, you can tell this was with the new keyboard. This is with this keyboard actually. I think this is the first one I believe that was with this keyboard on here, which is a CTK four thousand. So it's like almost ten times more advanced as the other one. Um, not quite. Not quite. But almost. So it's a newer one. It sounds much nicer. Um, the samples and everything. And also, it, I think I maybe played it louder or something. So actually, like, with the remastering thing, it sounds pretty good. You almost, like, aside from, like, some of the tape parts, you can't really necessarily even, you wouldn't think that it was recorded on a tape, necessarily. So, I don't know, I was kind of thrown by that a little bit listening to it. Uh, but, yeah, I can, I clearly just was, liked. I liked messing around on this one, because I liked, I found the groove of it where it was going, I was just messing around a bit on those and going with it. And so it might be a little long, but also I don't, you know, I don't often make happy sounding tunes that much. So not often that much. So it's, it's, uh, it was just nice to have on there too. And kind of nice change of pace for me, who for most songs is, you know, either making stuff that's really depressing or something about space or both. This was different. It's also called Newborn Beginnings because it started the side of the tape. I think I mentioned that. But I just wanted you to know that there's a lot of uh, deep meaning behind the things that I write and say. <laughs> The Chase is a song that I made um, for... Uh, actually for like a project in school for like high school it was a spanish project it was just a thing where you know you had to do all these say these lines or whatever um you just take your make sentences you know in, in spanish and so uh what we decided to do was we recorded a little short film thing called the chase that is not no longer up i think it might still be up somewhere like on facebook or something I don't even know if I actually have the, the video of that or not anymore. Uh, but there were like a couple of versions made. Um, one was for the class one, which in between had us reading lines about what had just happened on the screen. Uh, we just read the Spanish line and then the English line after it. Um, and then um, essentially it was just a really super basic thing. We had a like stupid like setup for that. And it's like, oh, this guy's like wanted for whatever, being a spy and shit. And it's like... He's like undercover and then he's found out because his fake mustache falls off and he gets chased. And that's kind of the plot. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's just a framework to have sentences happen. And then um, I don't know, it was just a goofy thing to be kind of like funny. And then I wanted to have music in it. And so I basically I recorded two songs and this was the t titled song. And I think also probably the credit song too. I think it was for both. Um, and then I had a different song that was in between there. And I had this apparently recorded like on this tape or whatever. I had kept this. Uh, and so I, I, I wanted to keep this and have it in there for like a reminder of that. And I think the song is kind of neat. Uh, maybe it went on a bit long, but fine. I needed, I needed to have enough of it to fit in there for what I wanted. Um, and then, uh, my brother made music for like the cut we did that was without the stops in between to read stuff. And, uh, and his music was way cooler. So, um, but I still, I still like this one. It's neat. So. Um, that was pretty much, that was the chase. So this, this that one's kind of interesting, I thought. <laughs> Paralleled Lights, uh, is titled Thusly because I thought it sounded, uh, or it gave me like a similar vibe to the song The Lights. So, um, I've always really liked it. Um, I don't know why they kind of remind me of each other, but I guess, like, maybe something to do with, like, the tones um, and just, like, the general, like, simple progression of them. Um, this one's kind of cool, too, with, like, the tone is, like, a bit, like, softer. 
Um, but it still has, like, a lot of, like, nice, like, bassiness and, like, I don't know, I like the tone. Uh, and so I've, I've, uh, I've always really enjoyed Paralleled, Paralleled Lights. Um, and it doesn't go on too long. Uh, it doesn't, like, overstay its welcome. I may be a bit biased there in the sense that I still really like it a lot. So, I don't know. It's one where I've always kind of come back and I've been like, I remember the title. I remember liking it. I remember there was, like, a song that I made that I thought was, um, just, it just kind of felt like it was in the same, like, league. It was, like, they're like, kind of almost like partner songs. The only reason it's not right next to it, too, on here would just because, like, the way I ordered these was I went in order of the tapes when they were recorded, um, uh, basically, and so everything this is from the oldest, and then the last songs are the newest of the stuff. Um, so that's interesting. And this is done with a newer keyboard, too, so I don't know. It's just kind of neat to, you know, have some sense of, like, oh, yeah, these kind of, like, it can still kind of be like I was before, and I don't know. This is, it's, this is gonna only get, this video is only gonna be interesting to, like, me and maybe one other person. And even that's a stretch. Forbidden Thunder is one that sounds cool. Like, that title is cool. Even, like, hearing that now, um, and not really even relating it to the song that it is, that's a cool title. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm not even entirely sure that I haven't subconsciously just stolen it from something. It just sounds too cool for me to have organically come up with myself. But um, the song itself also is one where, when listening to it, I kind of uh, thought I maybe would have made this into an actual song. When I say actual song, like one where I sang over it and whatever, like later, that wasn't just on a tape. And uh, as far as I can tell, I never did. Which makes me think maybe I should try to, but part of me also doesn't know if it's really going to fit that because of the way it moves and the, the, the way the song is and my capabilities as a lyricist and singer and musician, person. I just don't know if it's going to happen. So, um, we'll see. But uh, it was a neat song and, and uh, you know, I guess I totally get why I liked it and I, I think it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, the name uh, sets expectations a bit too high, but the song itself is not too bad. And, uh, 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 you know, listen to it and, 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 and let me know what you think if that name is too much for what it, it, the song is. That's all I got. <laughs> the lighting looks different now does it look different i didn't change anything but it looks like the lighting me i don't know so this one is um the way back and this is where i was playing around with the sequencer uh, option or i guess like it's uh, i think it's what it's called it's sequencer it doesn't like really allow you to actually like make a like a loop thing and keep looping something like a little sequence but like if you hold multiple keys um and you have like a beat going um It'll use, like, with the beat and sing, like, you can kind of adjust, like, how fast and whatnot. And it'll jump between all the different notes and, like, uh, in a certain, like, fashion. Um, and I, I don't know, I liked doing that, just playing around with that. And eventually I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a, you know, like, I'm gonna try to do a song with that. And I also use the split function. So partway through the song you can hear that, like, the playing the bass is, like, going over that. And it's, like, on the lower part, because you can split it so the like, one part is doing, like, you can kind of choose where the split goes, but the lower end was, like, hey, here's, here's where I put my bass, and, like, I was playing that down on the lower end and doing this stuff on the higher end. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Playing on the key looks weird. That was kind of interesting, and, um, I just like this tone. I think it was, like, vaguely inspired by, like, something I heard, uh, on MySpace. It was just some random, like, people making music I heard, and it was something kind of similar um with like the progression of it but it didn't have like that like the same kind of robotic like feel as this did so like i, I kind of like that's why i say inspired instead of like i ripped it off because that one i feel like it was actually just you know inspiration not me trying to sound like it and uh i don't know it's uh it's a neat little tune it's a neat little tune <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Residual Drippings A6 is titled so because it's on the tape of Residual Drippings, and it's the sixth track on side A. And basically, when I was making this, uh, I did this, I did uh, Strange Noises and Insanity's Aftertaste. Insanity's Aftertaste, in case you couldn't... I, 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 get, I talk a little fast sometimes, and I don't always pronunciate things clearly. But uh, those three were kind of done as, like, these whatever tapes, and I just kind of recorded and went. And Strange Noises was one where it was like, oh yeah, like, just weird stuff. Like, Residual Drippings that this came off of was actually one where... Um, I think it was mostly just kind of throwing stuff together, and this was kind of after I had been recording for a while with the camera and stuff and putting it up on YouTube, and the idea was, like, maybe I can go back to doing stuff on tapes a bit and just throwing these together here and there. Um, and, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of, you know, other stuff that I threw together onto this, um, and... You know, uh, this was one of them that I thought was okay. I mean, I have, uh, whatever, 80, roughly 80 minutes per CD that I can fill up, so after listening to a bunch of stuff, this was one of the things that was better at this point, um, and still made the cut. Um, I don't know, I tried to fit that as much as I could to salvage as much as I could for this, um, within reason, and, um, well, I don't, it's a little long, and it's not necessarily all that great, it's kind of a fun, just play through jam with it flow with it thing i guess um and it's look i listened to like 25 hours or something of stuff on tapes i mean this wasn't that bad but i was also pretty this was near the end so it was pretty loopy so um forgive me if it sucks um and you don't have to praise me if it's okay because that's not good enough to be worth praise is it the answer is no Residual Drippings B1 is the first track on side B of Residual Drippings. And I don't have a whole lot to say about this one either. I mean, these don't even have titles. I didn't title goddamn anything on this. That's why they're all titled this way. Um... Instead of retroactively trying to come up with them, I decided I'll just do it like that. It's easier. Um, and yeah, it's a uh, it's it's cool. I like the, the main initial like the main riff that goes on. I like that. I mean, then it's kind of play around it for a bit in the middle and near to the end, and then it kind of comes back. And I don't know I like it. Um, I think if I actually wanted to, I could probably turn that into a decent song, too. Um, it sounds like a little, a bit like Forbidden Thunder, and um, there's another song that uh, I'll be getting to later that it sounds kind of like, but it's um, probably way later but, uh, in this series, but it's uh, it's not actually either of those songs, you know, it's just, it just sounds kind of in the same vein of those, and I don't know, I kind of like the the, the way it sounds, I guess, I don't know. It's hard to really describe it either because it just has a certain like vibe to it, and I don't really know how I would express that vibe, so uh, I will stop trying to. But uh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> There's something on my shirt. I hope that wasn't in the last shot. Residual drippings. B4. You sunk my battle. Fuck! Um, so, uh, this is the fourth thing on side B of residual drippings. Song. We'll call it the fourth song. Track. That's better. Track. And it's, um, kind of Halloween-y. So, I don't know, that's neat. It is kind of a weird one to end an album on, for me anyways, but um, I mean, it's more of a compilation than really an album, but I guess it also is kind of neat the way it ends on that note, because I haven't really done that before, so that's neat. And, um, I don't know, it is like, like just a spooky thing. That I don't know that I would necessarily be able to easily recreate something like that out of the blue. 
So this is really cool to hear. Um, and that's really the whole compilation of stuff, all of the stuff I recorded on tapes. And I have all the actual individual songs and everything, and that stuff saved elsewhere. So it's not like any of that stuff's actually gone. I just, you know, this is all that's surviving on the channel since it didn't get a whole lot of attention anyways. But if people are interested, they can delve into the origins of me recording stuff, sort of. I recorded stuff before that, too, that's not on here either. But that's a whole different story that I don't even know if you guys would care. And it's coming from the people who are watching this series, maybe. So, sorry if this video is really long or if these aren't going to end up being kind of long. Um, but because of the nature of how many songs are on here and the things I might have to say, they're just probably going to end up being kind of longer than I expected. So we'll see what goes, what goes on with that and what you guys think. Be sure to let me know about what you think about this. If there's any other questions you want to ask or anything that's interesting or whatever, like... Leave me comments. I'd love to answer anything else that I can if you've been interested, especially if people are interested, because I don't know if anyone's going to be interested in this at, at all anyways. But uh, that's uh, the whole thing for Sam's Keyboard Series on tape, because I used to just call it all Sam's Keyboard Series, and I used to number the tapes, and I used to just call the other stuff part of Sam's Keyboard Series and brand it that way until I kind of just stopped calling it that because it didn't need to be branded in any way. It's not like I owned a brand or something. I just threw it on there because I was playing keyboard stuff and not necessarily making it into the function of albums quite yet on YouTube. So that's fascinating. And uh, hopefully the series is neat. Because if it's not, oh boy, uh, I'm about to waste a lot of time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. So for this album art, I made it, uh, like much of my album art, in MS Paint. And, uh, the idea was to have it be this, this idea of, like, okay, I'm gonna have yellow be the primary background color. And I want the primary thing in, the, in this to be blue. For these, like, little compilation things at the beginning here. And then I wanted to highlight it with the color white, um, to have it in there as part of it. Um... And, of course, the font here is Impact, a favorite font of mine to use on most of my things because it's it's kind of bold. It's easy enough to read. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I really like the way it looks. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll remember to continue to save these in a high enough, uh, you know, uncompressed format, high enough uh, definition to make it so that they don't get all weird and artifacty like a lot of my old stuff was. So, uh the little spindles and the tape thing in the bottom and try to get that in there the perspective on that and then like the label on the top just to give you an idea of what it was like to you know the idea of me recording stuff on tapes which i did for quite a while so um yeah that's the that's the bonus thing you got are you happy pretty cool